All right, folks, you're catching us here uh, on a typically wet day um, in the midst of installing the cabin heating system uh, in our Panzer. Now, as you may be aware, in a previous video that we did on this particular MES 4 kilowatt fluid heater, um, it's of a type that I've used previously, uh, very good success in the, not their Panzer, in the land yacht. So what we're doing today is we're just basically doing some of the grunt work, the kind of metal work and welding and bracketry and so forth to get the thing installed. And I've progressed pretty well with that. The heater itself is installed there. Uh, they have a particularly difficult to work with type of a bracket system that I suspect was probably again engineered by somebody that didn't actually have to um, ever work on the car that the thing was being installed into but nonetheless it's now um, in there very firmly so other components uh, that we're going to be using here are, are that you generally need for one of these fluid based cabin heater systems uh, is a reservoir which is this guy here um, this I picked up just from a random uh, scrap vehicle at my local breaker's yard. I think it was a Nissan van or something like that. Um, it just ha had this kind of a nice bracket that I could uh, make work here. And I uh, just welded that to a piece of material and just bolted that in uh, to a convenient point on my kind of battery bracketing system here. So that's all in there, it's very firm, and there's no, prob there's no problems. Uh, on the back side here, you probably can't see, there's a 16 millimeter pipe, uh, pipe outlet, uh, which we, we, we will be using. And on the front here, there was an eight millimeter one that I've blocked off uh, simply by fitting a small piece of rubber tubing and filled it with uh, quick setting epoxy uh, simply to blank that off as we in this case really only need the one large uh, 16 millimeter outlet so now that we have these guys in uh, we have to kind of work out how we're going to plumb it and we've also got uh, one of these really cool little um, 12 volt mag drive pumps uh, that will be doing the fluid circulation uh, between the heater and the um, heater matrix core within the vehicle. Now, just thought I'd run through this little guy because it's, it's, it's quite a neat uh, piece of kit. Let me make sure I'm just getting that there. Yeah, so what we have here is what was originally kind of installed in this vicinity um, of the heater uh, connections here. And it's comprised of two solenoid valves and an electric uh, pump, just a 12 volt uh, electric pump. So you might be thinking, well, okay, the solenoid valves um, are there so that you can have what they call dual climate control. So I guess you can have different um, temperature settings for each of the two front seat passengers. So if the driver is a particularly cold-blooded type, they can crank up the heat. Whereas if the passenger is a, li is a little bit more warm-blooded, uh, they can turn the heat down on their particular side. So now what this means for us is that unlike uh, most vehicles that I've seen, uh, the Panzer actually has three connections to the heater matrix. Uh, there's one 18 millimeter and two 16 millimeter holes uh, connections there. And what I'm kind of guessing is that one of them is kind of the main feed or the main return and the two smaller ones would have been controlled from the two solenoid valves here. Um, to basically decide, um, you know, as I say, what gets the most uh, heat. So with, with that being said, you might then say, well, what's the 12 volt ele electric pump for this guy here? 
And I suppose further from that, could I have reused that in this application? And I probably could have. The purpose of the 12 volt pump uh, is quite interesting and it's not something that I'd encountered previously, uh, at least that I'd been conscious of, though I had observed, I think, I think, uh, something similar on the land yacht, but I didn't quite understand it at the time. Now, what, what this allows one to do in the traditional um, petrol engine uh, system in the car is to run the heater with the engine turned off. Now you might think, well, how's you know how's that going to work? But take the following scenario: you've kind of been on a drive and you've driven someplace, maybe to a supermarket or so, or a shop or something like that, where you're you're going to make a short stop and you've got passengers in the vehicle. You can kind of stop the car, turn off the engine, uh, but leave the key on to accessory. And basically the heater blower motor will run and this electric pump uh, will continue to circulate coolant through the hot engine block and uh, continue to give cabin heat uh, to the vehicle even when the, the engine has been switched off. When you think about it, a big ass cast iron V8 is uh, quite a good uh, method of storing heat. So that's just a little, um, just a little uh, lesson on what this guy do, guy uh, does. And considering this is, you know, this is a vehicle uh, designed, I believe, towards the end of the nineteen eighties. Um, it's got a lot of of um, kind of innovative functions, uh, which uh, which um, this would be one, one of them. I don't know if modern vehicles have this facility, perhaps they 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 do, uh, but I actually think it's quite a it's quite a clever little thing. So anyway, enough about my BMW uh, nostalgia. Uh, we need to crew crack on and get the fittings and the tube out and see how we're going to plumb this guy up. So stay with us folks. Alright so currently uh, you guys might like to enjoy seeing me struggling with some tubing and stuff here so I figured I'd invite you along. So we're just fitting, uh, just after fitting let's call it the return holes here and uh, that is, as I said, a slightly larger bulkhead fitting and um, I've just been uh, struggling a little bit just to make that fit, but I have it on there and um, just got the Jubilee clip on there now and I'm going to go ahead and tighten that guy up and hopefully that'll be all good um, I'm debating whether I want to flush the heater matrix or not. Um, probably be a bad idea. But having said that, uh, might not be necessary. There we go. So your friend with all this stuff is a can of silicon spray. It's just ideal for. Uh, lubricating stuff and getting it all to go where it's supposed to basically. There we go, it's our Jubilee clip tightened up on that one. So that's, uh, that's our return line. So that should pretty much, that's going to uh, carry the, the cool coolant uh, back from the um, back from the matrix and that is you know, what is the matrix and all that. So that's going to go kind of down here. I need to try to avoid, you know, unfortunately as usual, there's almost something in the way, but we'll make some guides for it here, uh, just to hold the holes uh, in the right location and keep it from kinking. Um, so this needs to go down here uh, to the bottom of the reservoir uh, and the pump. So we're going to be getting the T-piece, um, 
some tea pieces here. These are just uh, these are uh, high temperature plastic. Uh, so we're going to be using those to join the pump and the return line and the feed from the um, from the reservoir. So our pump inlet uh, will be fed from the reservoir and from the return line, so it can basically circulate. So we're going to be kind of doing something like this um, down here. So, so let's see how that's going to work out for us. That should be pretty straightforward. I'm just going to tie the pump in down here then, um, probably to one of the one of the cooling lines down here, and it'll be all set. We'll put the electrical connection on it, and uh, let's go do it. So there I was, folks, busily filming away, and uh, as Scotty says, or said, I believe it was in Star Trek 3, the more they, they overthink the plumbing, the easier it is to stop up the drain. This was my first time trying to film on this shiny new Samsung Galaxy S4 phone uh, that I picked up, and it, for some reason, doesn't like filming when it's on battery. So, you know what, I'm going to be going back to the, uh, the S2. Anyhow, um, when we left off, we were pretty much uh, connecting the holes from the outlet of the pump to the inlet of the actual heater. So that's what we're doing at the minute, folks. What or I was doing, so I had to go digging out a phone charger and a... Um, a um, extension lead and whatever else so all the fun of uh, all the fun of live video there we go yeah there we go that hose is now fitted all right so that is the outlet from the pump so we have inlet to the pump from the um, from the reservoir, I've got a T-piece in there, and I'll be connecting this hose, which is the return from the heater matrix. And uh, that then should complete this part of the circuit for me. So when that goes on there like so, I'm leave a little bit of a loop in that, just so I can keep it away from the wiring going to the inverter. Um, and then, we only have the hot side left to do. Um, the hot side will be putting a bit of, um, oh, it's called aero tube. It's just kind of uh, plumbing pipe insulation. Uh, I'll probably put some on, on all of these tubes with the less heat that we waste out here in the um, engine compartment. Uh, the more that we'll keep in the car. And the more we keep in the car, the less energy that we have to expend making heat. So that's my plan. I um, don't know if it's going to work out, but hopefully it will. So, another Jubilee stroke hose clip. Already have some of the magic ingredient. So, there we go. Plain Jane. Um, this is our return line from the heater matrix. Um, and that's coming down to the T piece and feeding the water back into the inlet of the pump. Probably sounds a bit plum crazy at this stage, but uh, that all makes sense. There we go. That's that guy connected, and I'll make a little bit of a pipe clamp out of a bit of uh, galva band and keep that in place and keep it away from the high voltage wiring because it will be pretty warm, to be fair to it. So. Now, all that we've left is the hot water output from the heater um, going to the two inlets. And we have two inlets, so obviously what we need to do is we need to tee those guys up together. Um, and I have a metal tee piece for that because that'll be taking obviously most of the heat. Uh, whereas I, mean, I, could, I could use the plastic one, they're supposed to be good at I think 130 degrees, but 
I think I'll just rather use the metal one here. So it's going to work out um, how to do this now. I'm going to try and keep the holes as kind of long as I can just to uh, just to kind of well, I've got plenty of space to do loops and stuff here, which is important. Um, you can get spring that goes inside this type of holes um, so you can do tighter bends without fear of the heat of the water causing it then to kink over uh, which would be an undesirable outcome uh, so okay let's do some more holes in here for a minute and see how we get on now this stuff should go on here a good deal easier more holes clips required god almighty it must be Certainly going through them. Um, I'm all right. I got a couple more left. Okay. So uh, that way for the hose clip. It's good. It's a good idea when you're doing this to try to um, just orientate the hose clip so you'll have easy access to actually tightening the thing up. So that's what I'm kind of th thinking around here. So I imagine I'm going to have to go to the hardware store fairly soon because. I'm going to be running out of hose clips. Okay, so there's one of the uh, ones on like that. I'm just trying to work out um, how I want to do this. I'm probably going to join them up here just to give me the most uh, loopage on this thing. Just to, uh, yeah, I'm probably going them down here. So let's see if we can get hose clip on there. Uh, probably use the little ratchet arm on it. Be easier in this confined spot that we have ourselves in. Uh, so that's the story, folks. All the glamour of EVs, huh? Still end up with loads of tubing and wiring and all the other things you think you're avoiding. They're actually still here. I'm going to just take this hose off and uh, just tighten this clamp up a little bit, just get it snug on the hose. Then when I actually stuff it on there, and uh, yeah, it should be a little bit easier to tighten it up. There we go. Well, hopefully, and of course I know that I'm not exactly giving you guys a world class view of this, so apologies for that. But at least you get to see my bald head quite a bit, so I know you've been missing that. Yeah. good enough no point going mad on it so there is one so I'm going to just try and work out a kind of a hose plan here uh, cut up in the stuff now yeah I need to get more jubilee clips and probably more um, yeah I'll cut that off there and I'll bring the other one around I'll kind of do it a bit like a kind of a rebreather connection on a, on a scuba so I'll just bring them around in a loop and just put a T-piece on here and just go on to the um, outlet of the um, heater here I think that'll be kind of the way to do it so let's chop it here there we go I've got one more to go on to the heater matrix for the other, I assume the passenger side, I'd say that's the driver's side that I've just done there. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not doing too badly. There's a couple more jubilees here. Probably not as ideal on a size front. This is at 15 to 24, but it's still uh, more than satisfactory for what we're doing here. Kind of a mixed bag, really, what I've had lying around the place, just snug it up a little bit before we put the hose on. Now with these there's no real need for the the silicon because uh, they're a pretty good fit on here anyway. There we go, straight on. There it is, like that. No 
just like that. Alright, that's looking pretty good. Let's see now if we can get that tongue tightened up. We kind of need to be double jointed at some point sometimes in this gig. for government work okay so again I'm going to do the same kind of a theory here I'll have to loop it around a bit but that is where I'm going to chop it there we go so this gives me my two uh, hot hoses here um, that will be going to the input to the heater Got my return line, my pump, uh, yeah, pretty much uh, uh, ease of access have I there to the electrical connector on the pump. Yeah, we can get to that. It's a nice snap-on connector, so shouldn't have any problem to make that happen. All right, folks, I'm not going to bore you guys to death much more with my hose antics here. Um, we'll be back in part two. Uh, we'll be looking at the electrical wiring for the heater and um, hopefully then we'll be able to power the thing up and be able to demiss the windscreen because the uh, video I did the last evening there I only realised that uh, the windscreen was quite misty and the camera kind of didn't come out uh, too well until after the event so as usual folks, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks for tuning in and uh, stay with us because we'll be back soon with more fun and games.